Hi guys, Alex here. Welcome back to Shook Unscripted. And I am super excited. We're bringing it back. It's been like a year since I've done an unscripted. But for today's video, add in a side of delusion. Today, we're going to be talking about girl world adjacent Instagram star, Fat Girl Flow. You may know her or you may not. We have done one video about her in the past, but it has been a long time. When it comes to delusional figures in the fat acceptance world, she ranks pretty high up there. Now, I wouldn't put her above Marissa Matthews, but that's another story. That's somebody that's pretty hard to beat. Fat Girl Flo is on pretty much every platform, TikTok, YouTube. Her real name is Carissa N. King, and she did find herself in hot water about a year or two ago when she clapped back at resident favorite of the channel, Glitter and Lasers. What did Glitter and Lasers do to get Carissa upset? Well, all she did was come on and make a video stating that she thinks she might have to lose weight in order to prolong her life, in order to have a better time on these vacations that she seems to be going on all the time. Well, that was enough to set off Carissa and she made a whole video not even mentioning Anna's name, but obviously talking about Anna and her video. All she simply wanted to do was lose a little bit of weight. But to someone like Carissa, who has fully drank the Kool-Aid of the fat acceptance movement, that right there is too much. She currently resides in Kansas with her partner, who also is a fat acceptance influencer going by Comfy Fat Travels, I guess focusing on traveling while fat. I like J-Bay better. Scrolling through her Instagram page, I noticed she recently did a aesthetic CPAP video. But I usually see these videos when they're setting up like a really nice looking work area, not dusting off the CPAP. When it comes to these fat acceptance influencers, you can see that the community is on the decline. And that is because the originals, the people who kind of started this community, I don't know for sure, but I would say it sprung out of like 2013 Tumblr era. Well, that was 10 years ago. These people were probably in their 20s. Now that they're in their 30s, health problems are really starting to catch up to them. And they're starting to realize that maybe they were in a cult this whole time. It's a very tumultuous time in the fat acceptance community right now. As members begin to age, their health declines and some have even passed away. If you guys really want to see how delusional Fat Girl Flow has become, stick around. We're going to take a look at this article that she wrote called, I Can't Wipe My Own Ass, and I'm okay with it. Let's just get right into it, I mean, shall we? So this right here is her web page, fatgirlflow.com. It's pretty aesthetic, not gonna lie, modern. Of course, her featured article is five sturdy couches for fat people. Raise your hand if you're plus size and have ever feared of sitting on a piece of furniture. Today, we're gonna zero in on this one right here, an article called I Can't Wipe My Own Ass, and I'm okay with it, starting off. Have you ever seen a social media post that punched you right in the gut? Another body positive influencer turned anti-fat mean girl is out here serving lukewarm takes in the new year. I'm not shocked. This is happening with a frequency now. I think it's because we're all aging into our 30s. And as our bones creak and muscles tense, we're discovering our internalized ableism. You know what's interesting? I feel like she's halfway there. She understands why people are finally seeing the light, so to speak. These ex-members of the fat acceptance community, they're in their 30s. The bones are starting to creak, as she said. In Anna's case, she realized that she was going to have to lose some weight or everything was going to be difficult for her for the rest of her life. It's like, you're almost there, Carissa. This is how she sees Anna now as an anti-fat mean girl. Even though if you go look at her content, it is anything but that. She's still embracing her size, whatever that may be at the time. She's just adding in exercise, I guess. And don't forget, she is promoting weight loss drugs. So that is probably up there as one of the worst things that you can do, according to Carissa. Well, some of us are discovering and interrogating our internalized ableism. 
Others have chosen to use their mobility challenges as motivation to rekindle that old flame with Mr. Shame. A rose by any other name still smells like you think less of fat and disabled people, folks. Okay, so I have a lot to say about this passage. Her way of thinking is totally and completely warped beyond belief. This is how you know that this whole fat acceptance thing is one big cult. Number one, they attack the people who leave. Number two, they spread lies and the people that are deep in believe these lies a hundred percent. She sees anybody who is struggling with their mobility and uses that as motivation to eat healthier, start moving more, working out, making life easier for themselves as just them falling back into diet culture instead of trying to make a healthy lifestyle change. That is quite the motivator when you realize that you're standing up and you can't even walk a quarter mile, you have to constantly take breaks. Of course, that would be a motivator for people. This whole article almost feels like a shot at glitter and lasers because we know she was extremely triggered by her initial video saying that she wanted to lose some weight. And Anna was very careful about not stepping on anybody's toes, but even just suggesting that the number on the scale would go down was enough to trigger these folks. I also don't like the way that she puts fat and disabled people together as if it's the exact same thing. We know disabled people were born with a disability, It's not the same thing at all to me, and you can reverse course at any time. Someone who has cerebral palsy, for example, someone in my family has that, there's nothing that she can do to reverse course and get up out of the wheelchair and start walking around. It really just isn't the same, and I feel like it's almost insulting to disabled people. I myself have a mild disability that affects my mobility, and there's nothing that I can do to really fix that. It's why I especially look at people like Fat Girl Flo, or whenever I'm with someone and they're complaining about walking, I just feel like, try doing it in my shoes. I'm in really bad pain right now, but I just keep on going because I don't have any other choice. But yes, keep doing nothing and making the situation worse for yourself. The worst part about this is these people believe that they are perfectly healthy, even with the CPAP machine. Oh, this has nothing to do with my weight. Really? I don't even know how someone can be that delusional. Delulu can be fun. Real delusion is a prison. She posted this girl's random Instagram post. This is not fat girl flow. Full transparency, I have zero remorse or shame for being public about my weight loss. Two years ago, I couldn't wipe my own ass. That's the T. Well, random influencer number nine, guess what? I can't wipe my own ass either. I haven't been able to make the reach since... 2020. I can't believe she's on here admitting this. When we were all first sent home for the pandemic and I relied solely on my bidet, what can I say? I literally went nowhere. I also have a bidet that I bought in 2020, but you need to dry off. What are you drying off with? You're just doing a drip dry, I suppose. Maybe she has one of those fancy ones where it dries you after. I guess at least she's doing something. (laughs) I lost my ability to reach and in all honesty, haven't quite found my way fully back yet. I haven't spoken super publicly about this, but I've written about my experience with this particular challenge over the years on my Patreon. My friends and family know, and for the most part, they all have bidet attachments in their homes too. Was that so that they could have a bidet particularly, or was it to accommodate her because she cannot wipe anymore? And now it's finally time to say it loud and proud, I don't wipe my ass. I don't understand what she is so proud of here. I don't wipe my ass. She has gotten herself to the point where she can't do basic hygiene. It's not just about using a bidet versus using teepee. What about in the shower? Obviously, she's not washing back there because she can't unless she has her partner do it for her, which we have seen on shows like 600 Pound Life. You need somebody else to come in and help you. I don't think that it's something to be loud and proud about. The delusion. This is how these fat acceptance people are. Like the more that they go up on the scale, the happier they are. And they even talk about the bigger you are, the more marginalized you are in society. And yet you celebrate these milestones. I don't get it. It is just so backwards. 
Not to mention all the things that you just can't do. And what if you go on vacation? Not every hotel has a bidet, especially the ones that I stay at. They never have a bidet. It hasn't always been this easy to talk about. The truth is that I have felt a lot of shame about this. Like when I spent hours in therapy talking about how my body had betrayed me so much that I couldn't even do something as natural and standard as wiping one's own ass. And wouldn't that drive you completely mad? I mean, think about it. It's going to be itchy back there, but you can't itch it. I felt ashamed while I sobbed in front of my then supervisor at work, admitting to her that I couldn't return to work in person because I couldn't care for my own toileting needs. Wouldn't this just send you over the edge? I mean, she talked about how being motivated because of the setbacks of morbid obesity is something that is so wrong, according to her, but it's natural to want to do these things. It doesn't get more backwards than this. Not being able to go to work and do your job because you can't wipe and then going to your supervisor about that. I guess it was at a convenient time where working from home started to become the norm at certain companies, so I guess she lucked out in that way. I felt even more shame when I pursued an accommodation at my workplace requesting that a bidet be put in place for me. So she wants the company to come and fund a bidet, someone to just put in a bidet for her. I mean, there are some that are relatively cheap. There are also ones that are portable that you can take yourself, but I don't think that would work for her because you have to hold them back there, which requires then a certain level of mobility that she admits she lacks. So that wouldn't even be an option. But here we go. Not ever does it cross her mind that maybe I should lose some weight. No, no, that is the absolute devil. Everyone else needs to make accommodations for what I did to myself. I argued the case that this could be beneficial to many, not just me. Who else uses bidets, people with mobility challenges, temporary physical injuries, disabled people, folks of certain religions that require them to use a bidet for spiritual reasons, and yes, sometimes other fat people. Did you ever inquire if these people were? at this place of employment. Because to me, this just sounds like a way for her to guilt trip management by using other people's mobility challenges, disabilities, when really it's just for her. What strikes me most about this post is the glaring ableism. The anti-fatness is almost to be expected. We're seeing many influencers ride whatever wave brings them praise and popularity. So the post she is talking about is the one that she included in this one. This woman, her face is cut off, but she says, I have zero remorse or shame for being public about my weight loss, and then says, two years ago, I couldn't wipe my own ass. So she is sharing her own experience. I don't see that as ableism. Carissa will take everything as a jab to herself like she did the glitter and lasers video but a lot of the times it's not that deep this woman is just sharing an achievement of hers and this is the post that got her calling her an anti-fat mean girl carissa always has this air of i'm better than you while at the same time she's shaming this person for doing something to improve their life she seems like the mean girl to me you're gonna shame this woman and glitter and lasers while being snarky and not wanting to say their name that's how she was. It's giving very much cult, Carissa, especially if it means they're hopeful of transitioning into the realm of straight-sized audience instead of being pigeonholed into the plus-sized world. I understand the desire to receive praise for fitting in and being a good fatty by pursuing weight loss. I'm sympathetic to those feelings. As someone with a disability of my own, I hate how Carissa and other obese people use disability as a shield, almost as if what they are suffering is permanent when we know it's not. If all I had to do was diet and exercise and I could walk like a normal person, you can bet I would do that. If there was something, anything that I could do, I would do that. Carissa has the power to do what she needs to do so that she can wipe her ass. I find it insulting personally. Well, (laughs) the world of fat acceptance sure is a strange one. I do see the community is on a very specific downturn as people are passing away and others are coming to the realization that if they don't do something, they're going to end up like the other women. They're going to end up like the people that did pass away. It's going to be too late. There was this woman in particular that was starting to get it together and exercising for TikTok, eating healthier, she tragically lost her life. It was just too late. The damage had already been done and she was only in her 30s. That is so sad. These people promoting this, telling people don't get healthy, just stay the way you are. It's fine. You're fine. 
Everything's great. You can't wipe your own ass. You should be proud of that. No. At the end of the day, the truth prevails and people can see right through this. They'll see it for exactly what it is. I think it's evil. It's absolute poison. Anybody promoting anything that's going to shorten someone's lifespan, make their life harder, it's wrong. And her using all these nicey nice words to make us feel like the bad guy. I'm not falling for it. All right, you guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think. Was this or was this not the most delusional thing you've seen on the internet today? Go ahead and leave a thumbs up if you agree. Let me know if you guys heard about this one. This story is from about four months ago, but I've never heard about it until now. I was going to do a reaction to Fat Girl Flow, but this caught my attention. It was so much more interesting than any vlog reaction could ever be. Let me know if you have followed Carissa, aka Fat Girl Flow. I have on and off for the past three or four years. She has been semi-active. She does not post on YouTube too much, but when she does, <laughs> I'm there watching, not going to lie. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I will, of course, catch you guys in the next one. All right. Bye, everyone.